Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Introduction to WinCC Open Architecture. I am James Mowry, Operations Manager here at CASM. As we get started, please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be available via the CASM YouTube channel after the presentation. Also, you should all be muted, so if you have any questions or comments throughout the webinar, please kick the, click the question icon on your screen and type your question. We will address all questions and comments at the end. Now I'll go ahead and hand the microphone over to Sean Sandoval, president at CASM, to begin the presentation. Thank you, James, and thank you to everyone in attendance to view this webinar and learn a little bit about WinCC OA, the open SCADA platform by Siemens. The agenda we would like to cover with you over the next 30 minutes will include a brief overview of CASM, a review and definition of the space for which WinCCOA software is a good fit, and for our engineering partners in attendance, begin to understand how WinCCOA provides engineering efficiency for our customers. I am joined by our VP of Technology, Kirk Kemble, who will wrap things up with a brief demo, and we will do our best to answer any questions you may have at the end of our presentation. So let's get started. CASM is aptly named for bridging technology gaps. We are a new breed of Siemens partner that provides sales, support, and training for the Siemens Digital Factory and PLM software business. We offer real-world experience for our digital solutions, personalized support, and training to help our customers' digital adoption initiatives. Notably, we've gone through advanced SCADA training with the Department of Homeland Security via Idaho National Labs and are recognized as a computer emergency response team. We've also worked with many customers in multiple vertical markets over the years and helped architect systems from the hundreds to hundreds of thousands of data points. We frequently offer customer educational events from tech tours, webinars, to certified training. And if you'd like more information about upcoming events, please visit us at chasm.com forward slash training. With regards to our technology portfolio, we offer a range of solutions that are focused on data acquisition and information management software as enablers for the digital factory. Our flagship solution is WinCCOA by Siemens. Targeted at anyone counting production units, we offer a cloud-based performance as a service application called LiveByte. With LiveByte, we've effectively lowered the cost barrier for gaining real-time overall equipment effectiveness information to a wide area network with a simplified approach. And targeted at maintenance departments, we've got a software package called IQ Agent that takes a practical approach to augmented reality. We believe this is going to revolutionize the maintenance cart and how work orders are completed. Not only can you scan a point of interest and load data, but IQ Agent also offers full access to documents, work orders, and forms. We are also focused on closed loop quality management software with Somatic IT R&D Suite, which offers the capability to provide certificates of analysis, chain of custody, charting and trending, all for QA testing. And to round out our software solutions, Cinema Server. This software package allows you to get information like firmware versions, network uptime, and topologies of all nodes and networks, all within a user-friendly environment. And last but not least, we offer a range of hardware from industrial tablets, industrial PCs, networking components, and so on. To understand where WinCAC OA fits in the digital factory technology stack, it's important to recognize that Siemens is the only vendor that can offer total solutions that cover the range of automation, manufacturing execution systems, and product lifecycle management. When referring to WinCC Open Architecture and with a focus on data acquisition, we often refer to it as middleware and the digital glue between the ISA levels two and three. So what is SCADA? The acronym stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. By the year 2020, it's estimated that 50 billion devices will be connected to the internet, and a lot of which will be in the industrial environment, which, we, which means there will be an even more focus on data acquisition and more so data management. WinCCOA not only offers superior data handling capabilities, but is already built on an open platform to support open communications, database interoperability, and advanced analytics.
supporting all of these features and components all with the goal of providing the right information in context on any device to the people who need it most and on demand. To give you an idea of recent WinCCOA use cases, I've selected a group of applications to share with you. WinCCOA is providing situational awareness approach for a life safety system that is connected to hundreds of gas centers, a, a public announcement system, and RFID, all connected to people, managing alarms. In the case of an event, they control and automate all of the mustering station for people to make sure and ensure life safety. A major automotive manufacturing plant is leveraging WinCCOA's smart SCADA advanced statistical tools built on our language with a focus on asset utilization and uptime. And then one of our Seattle-based integration partners, Process Solutions, has built a turnkey energy management system on WinCC Open Architecture, and we'll be showcasing that in future webinars, uh, so you can take a look at that system as well. The country of Italy has taken a smart utility approach, moving from 15 SCADA systems to one. Essentially, the entire country of Italy runs on WinCCOA. And in conjunction with a handful of breweries running on WinCCOA, solution partner Corso Systems has been rolling out oil and gas distillation systems, and that is the middle uh, lower uh, screen that you see right there. And last but not least, on the bottom right, a turnkey MES application by Vertec Industrial that provides production work orders, downtime reporting, and overall production statistics or stats. Both Siemens and Chasm are excited about the rapid adoption pace of WinCCOA, both from our valued ecosystem partners and customers. So what makes WinCCOA better? Let's take a short trip back in time to understand how industrial HMI SCADA systems are evolving. In the 80s, we were excited about graphically replacing physical buttons, and no one thought Microsoft would ever end up on the shop floor. For most of the 80s and 90s, Microsoft became more pervasive, and HMI became the staple, providing mostly machine control through a graphical user interface. Then in the 90s and 2000s, historical databases entered the market, and distributing information with a server and clients was a common approach. A majority of the market then and a majority of the market now is built on what we refer to as tag-based technology. It is a very one-to-one -one approach. For example, you need a tag for an alarm, a tag for an input-output point, you need a tag for historical, which in turn creates spaghetti code and only increases your maintenance time of the system and reduces your agility to move data to your consumers. WinCCOA is the next generation platform independent SCADA software built on true object oriented programming environment. At its core, this is the foundational element of WinCCOA. One of the most storied uh, systems that we've ever come across in our history is CERN, the Large Hadron Collider. This is an important relationship for WinCCOA as we get a lot of joint development from CERN. To give you a few bullet points of how big CERN is and why we get such advanced features inside of WinCC Open Architecture, uh, please note, you know, over the years, it took 12 man years to identify 30 different systems. A few were selected and tested there. And at the end of the day, WinCCOA was selected as the only capable system to manage their 10 million IO, which tested at 20 million IO. And WinCCOA is actively managing roughly a petabyte of data per month. And there are long-term agreements in place with CERN for future knowledge share of WinCCOA development. WinCCOA has been around for a while. If you do some web searches and look up PVSS, you'll find a host of information. But the software has been around since 1985 and has a viable roadmap well into next decade. So let's talk about the foundational element of WinCCOA that enables its engineering efficiency, the true object-oriented environment. The true object-oriented environment enables you to build all of the data into a structure and allow you to enforce engineering standards. This is an example of a motor template that has a historical archive, alarm, value range, dead banding, authorization, and an IO address. 
In addition to that, there are 21 total configurations that you can build into a template in the WinCCOA environment. That motor parent template can then spawn off child instances and allow you to manage and enforce engineering standards throughout the enterprise. This is an example of a parent template that has three configurations that include a historical archive, engineering unit, and value range. Let's say that I need to make an engineering change and add an alarm to it. That change would absolutely be propagated to the child instances and you would have a common look and feel and enforced engineering standard and enforced data. The benefits of the object-oriented software is that you can enforce data standards. Overall, it will reduce your maintenance time of the system. It will reduce time to market as you can push out information much faster and centrally manage your, all of your configurations of your system. WinCCOA is extremely portable and can be installed on single board computers up to advanced server systems. The entire installation takes about five minutes and the same one gigabyte installation file it can be used for all system types. Here's an example of WinCCOA installed on a gateway device using no red and MQTT. Portable software brings endless possibilities to your data acquisition needs. Another core foundational element of how WinCCOA has such a small footprint and the ability to scale is an event-based system which allows for very efficient use of computer resources. We often say WinCCOA allows you to do more with less. The benefits of portable event-based software allow you to reduce your computer hardware. It will enable you know, the industrial internet of things. Imagine having advanced software that you can use on these small little gateway computers. The, the concepts and possibilities are endless. Uh, Event-based systems allow you to increase data accuracy, and because your server configuration of your system doesn't require as much hardware, you reduce breakpoints of the entire system's operations. Uh, and overall, you're reducing the system overhead of your SCADA software. WinCCOA is also platform independent, uh, and platform independence allows the system to be future-proof, is already enabled to support a lot of the open source tools out there like the JavaScript libraries that you see. And all communications happens via TCP IP internet. And web clients don't need and are not reliant on Microsoft Internet Information Services. You'll see an example in our upcoming demo on that example. And one of the concepts that's really tough, tough to grasp is when CCOA is built on itself, uh, meaning that it is solely based on a C-based environment and which allows for a lot of the interplay of the system. Another key highlight for WinCCOA is database interoperability. With the next release of WinCCOA, we will be able to support NoSQL databases like MongoDB, which will speed up the technology even further with regards to supporting object-oriented scripting environments. In general, I selected one of these pages. There's about four of these. Uh, components that with all the features and functionalities inside WinCCOA, but some few highlights for review is a highly distributed system. It is supports redundancy and also supports two by two redundancy for full disaster recovery. Not just disaster recovery from a virtual machine standpoint, but imagine geographically having another redundant pair across the other side of a city or at a completely different location that in the event of a disaster that you could completely recover to an entire uh, new um, set of servers. Those servers, you, you can't replace data in the event of a failure, but you can replace hardware. So this is one of those items that allows you to protect the position of your information and be able to, to operate in the event of some catastrophic event. The platform independence, key performance indicators, scheduler, there's just a host of technology available inside of WinCC Open Architecture and future webinars we will be digging down much deeper into some of these foundational elements and features inside of WinCC Open Architecture. With that being said, I'm going to pass the mic over and control to our Vice President of Technology, Kirk Kemble, and he will walk you through uh, an introduction to WinCCOA. Take it away, Kirk. Thank you, Sean. 
Yes, I do. Let me get the screen share up. Okay, as Sean mentioned, um, we want to talk. This is just an introduction to WinCCOA. What I'd like to do is walk you through the creation of a project from beginning to final runtime within a web client and see what that looks like and, and use some of the predefined objects and predefined uh, graphics that come with the WinCCOA environment. So what we will do is actually create a very simple pump station, two pumps, two check valves, animate these, and uh, deploy these into a runtime web client or web server, I should say. So let's get started. The installation of WinCCOA, with the installation, I should say, of WinCCOA, we see, oh, nope, sorry, wrong one. We see that uh, there are really only three major components that get installed under Siemens automation. And that is, I have a few different versions here, the WinCCOA documentation, the help file, the project administrator, and the console. We're going to start this, pro this demo by launching the project administrator. From here, we'll create a brand new project. Note the folder it gets created in. So what this is doing in the background, I'm going to say no to that one. What it's doing in the background is actually creating a project folder as well as a, a standalone database that the uh, all of the configurations and, and current snapshot values will be contained within. Now, I did mention that I'm going to use all of the predefined and reusable engineered objects inside the OA environment. There's one thing. I'm going to add a few outside third-party pictures into this to, to make the flow a little bit more presentable to the operator. So once the, once the project is created, we launch it. And I may run a little bit long on this. I'm going to apologize, but I think it's important to see everything. And in the background, the system is creating the directories and creating the archives, the user archives. There's no password on the root, um, root direct. Or, I'm sorry, the root user. So here we are. This is our this is our graphical editor environment, the Getty. We're going to create a panel, <clears throat> which is the operational interface. It's what the operators will see during runtime. And it's an object. It has properties and methods associated with it. We can change the panel size. Now, we have a simple panel. What we're going to do is add pumps and check valves to this overall lift station and assign those to, the, to a, a, data, a data point that leverages the predefined data point types within the OA environment. And how do we do that? To see the graphical objects, we're going to enable that view, catalog for all objects. This is a dockable interface panel. <laughs> and from here, we'll open up the standard objects tab and add a simple pump. Now I mentioned there, there will be two pumps. This interface, we can either choose to select a, a predefined IO pump, or I should say data point, or we can generate them from here. Let's go ahead and generate those. The station one, pump one. I'm going to have two pumps in general, or for I should say for this runtime station. And they will be a, a data point type pump one. So we have list station pump one. We'll generate one more. LS1 pump two. With this graphic, we will associate it with pump one. And now we're going to parameterize these things. So what do I want to have enabled during runtime? Well, we, we need to know, is it open or closed? Let's go ahead and add some alarming attributes to that as well. If we wanted to, we could, change, we could add, show, show the speed of the pump. In this case, pump is on. <clears throat> and then we need to do the same kind of parameterization for pump two. I created it using a different pump type, you'll note. So we'll add a couple of different values, and then here's our state. <clears throat> okay. And then from here, I can drag another pump on. 
link it to pump two. That's all we need. The other thing we're going to do is create a check valve. And for this, we're going to use an internal data point to monitor statuses as well as uh, alarming attributes. So we will generate LS1 P1. So list station one, pump one, valve one. To simplify our naming, we'll generate one more. List station one, pump two, valve one. And again, we need to parameterize these things. What, what do we want to see? And do we want some alarming associated with that? We have to do that not only for valve for pump one, but also the pump two valve. And we'll only have just a state on that one. <laughs> okay, well, let's collect. Let's what I want to do with this valve is rotate it as well. And then connect it with a pipe. We can line everything up. And now with these two objects, we can copy them. These are just standard Windows keys controls. And in this case, we actually did it with all of them. So I don't need pump two here. I can change the attribute of the parameterization. Well, that's one pump two. Well, that's one pump one. You can do the same thing with the valves. Pump two, valve one. <clears throat> and now, for a script I'm going to enable on a switch, I need to make sure my naming conventions are correct for these. Pipes. Actually, we can go ahead and align everything on the bottom. All right. I need to add one more exit pipe here, and that'll be... Here, and then we can squeeze these things up into there. So we have the exit header, feed pipes. That looks good. Let's add a. So one of the other things we need to know about a lift station is level. What is it? How how full is it currently? So let's add another object here, and this will be an analog object. And from here, we'll generate. new data point parameterize that we do need to see what the value is note it's typed with station level okay and so the purposes of this we're going to we're going to animate objects to show when pumps are on when the when the pipe is full um, or loaded in this case and then when they're off there's going to be no control all the control should happen in the plc so when i turn a pump on I'm just going to simulate the value of the level, and the level in this case may be rising, may be falling. It all depends upon the simulator. The, the pump will have no control. That takes a little bit more scripting, more than I have time, than I have a lot of time for. Okay, so we're going to add a switch to just turn the pumps on, turn them off. We'll use that with we'll we'll use the new or we'll use a extended widget object. I don't necessarily like the rocker toggle, so we'll change that view by looking at an extended property of that particular EWO. And now we'll put some scripting behind it that when the, when the value toggles on, it does something. In this case, we're going to get the current value of the pump. And, the, and for, for, per, for the purposes of this particular pump or switch, this will be, we'll be looking at pump one, so we're going to get that value of pump one state. Oh, before I do this, I need an internal variable. It's gonna track what our current value is. It's not int, it'll be bool.
case sensitivity is important. And then we're going to put that value, the value of that state in our internal memory type. At the same time, at the same time, we're also going to toggle that value by using a set. I won't get into, the, into what's happening behind the scenes with the DP gets and sets. We cover that in training. And now what I'm also going to do is turn on that check valve. So we'll look for it. Pump one valve one dot state. Another thing that we'll do is if the state is high, we're also going to turn on the flow values for the pipes. So we'll do a conditional check here. If not val indicating that the value of zero is going to be changed to one, we need to turn on. We're going to do something. Otherwise, we're going to do something else. The first thing that we're going to do is when now we come back to the naming conventions of the pipe and all of this information I'm putting in here is within our help file and what I'm actually doing so here I'm actually telling it when this is true that flowing how how much uh, space gets utilized by the flowing animation will be at least 50% of the actual pipe and then I need to turn it on by indicating or a high rate of speed and these attributes, as I mentioned, are in the um, in the help. I also need to do it for the header, which is affectionately named pipe three. And then in the case that it's turned off, I need to turn off both pipes one and two, or one and three, I'm sorry. Okay, and then we can test this before I do that. I want to make sure that my naming conventions are correct. Quick test. My valve didn't come on. So we'll look at this one again. P1, V1. <clears throat> oh, that is under toggle. Station one. And we can test that one more time. Okay. We copy this across. And then we just have to change our script to look at something else. In this case, we want to turn pumps two and the valve on and then this energize this pipe and not that pipe. So we'll change the naming. Instead of pipe one, it'll be pipe two. And we need to turn that off as well. <clears throat> Test close. Now the other thing would be nice for the operator to have a visual component showing exactly what that level looks like. We have another object available that can give us that visual component. And we're going to link this to the level that we set, the internal data or the data point type, data point, push this to the back, test. Okay. So now here's where I get, here's where I cheat a little bit. I want to make this visually appealing to the, uh, to the end user. Um, before we do that really quick, let's add a simulator to make sure our values are going up and down, that our level is, is going up and down. And again, we're going to tie it to the lift station level. Test it. And if I turn this animation on, we get values coming up and down. All right, looks good. So now here's where I'm going to cheat just a little bit. 
I'm going to go back into the project that got created. It's called presentation. This is the entire project that we're developing in right now. I'm going to copy a couple of pictures into this directory for reuse. And part of those pictures will be to present the lift station a little bit more user friendly. So we're going to change a property of the panel itself the background property to include a picture. And now we can do some alignment. Looks good. Let's move this over. So here we're getting, we're pulling the final components of what the operator will see in runtime into a final drawing. Okay, I'm gonna move this up. Save that. Now this is only one part of the panel. To complete the actual application, the deliverable to the end user, we need to add other things like alarm banners, alarm standards, user login, this type, this um, other functionality such as summary alarms. And we actually give you a tool inside the WinCCOA environment from Getty, the panel topology tool that quickly does this for you. We can use some of the predefined templates. Let's say free responsive. All of this is covered in the training. We go through all of it. So in lieu of time, I'm just going to do these things really quick. And, it, and any, if you have any other questions on how these things were done, follow up in the um, question section. So I'm going to create a new topology. And this is our navigation topology within the OA runtime environment. link this to a very specific runtime panel, which is list station. Notice that when I created this new panel topology, a brand new panel got created main. So this will be our default de facto go-to panel. And that is all I really need to do on this one. When I close this, it goes through a couple of things. It actually generates summary alerts. So we've heard the, uh, the ISA 101 standard, the VDEI 3669 standard. These are alarming standards. High performance HMI covers this in depth. Uh, my counterpart, Todd Malone, actually covered this on a previous webinar for, um, from Siemens. But what we're doing here is we're aggregating alarms through from this panel topology that we just created. And the idea here is to, within at no more than three clicks, get to the actual alarm that caused the issue with the flood of alarms, alarms that we may see in an alarm viewer control. But notice that I don't have any alarm viewers. I haven't set any of the default panel topologies. So let's take a look at, really quick, I'm gonna change the main splash. I realize we're running over time. I apologize for that. Um, but we're almost done. All right, so we save this. All right. As it stands, I've created the complete runtime template or the complete runtime project. I can enable this by adding an additional user interface, but just for giggles, let's see what it looks like when I create a, how, how do I take this project and turn it into a web server project? We're gonna add a manager, which is a runtime client. And we'll say manual. <clears throat> And as soon as I enable this particular control manager, I just turn this project into a fully functional web server project. We can navigate to, there are a couple of different, um, I wanna say there are, there are a couple of different clients available to WinCCOA. In our case, we're gonna look at just the HTML5 client, the ultralight, the ultralight client UX. And that is under localhost, so how do you spell local? forward slash data. This is the path that you have to get to to get to this particular thing, This uh, to get to this particular um, interface. And this interface has no installer because it's all an HTML5 wrapper.
We go through our login. Notice I didn't add any security as I was putting this demo together. That is intrinsically in, um, a part of the panel topology functionality that we walk through. We can expand the template. Look at the lift station, turn on some values, turn pumps on, turn them off. Now, part of these objects as well have built-in functions. All I have to do is click on this, this level function and I can look at things like trends. I didn't build any of this into this. This is all natively, all this engineering already exists in the WinCCOA environment. We can look at additional trends. So some of these data points have a lot of functions built into them. We can look at um, values going back in time as well as some aggregate values. We can also, at the pump level, simulate alarms. Notice as soon as that alarm came in, my, I got a flood of alarms inside my alarm, alert viewer. And if I happen to not be on this particular panel that is generating this alarm, I see an alarm that comes in and I can actually open this panel. So let's, let's, let's follow through this. Alarm came in one right mouse click two there are my two alarms that are active so less than three clicks got us into the actual alert variable conforming to that isa 101 standard so this is all part of the, this is this concludes this demo um, it's very simple as i said we used a lot of the pre-defined stuff and we turned it from the creation of a brand new project into a fully functional runtime engine with simulations and with that i will allow i will uh, Turn this back over to James and James Q and A. All right, thank you, Kirk. At this time, we will address some of the questions and comments that we have received uh, throughout the, the webinar. So the first one, I heard Kirk mention training. When is the next training class? Uh, Sean? Yeah, so we typically have one per quarter and we will be adding a new session that's going to happen either early October or late September, but that will be on the chasm.com forward slash training site, uh, and that will be added sometime uh, this week. All right. Thank you, Sean. Next question. Is there a systems integrator partner program? Um, Sean, this one's for you, I believe. Yes, there is a systems integrator partner program. Uh, it is managed by Siemens, obviously. We are a certified WinCCOE training provider, so some of the um, requirements, we can provide all of that, uh, and we have your email. We can send out that information if you're, information, if you're interested in becoming a certified solution partner for WinCC Open Architecture. All right. Thank you, Sean. Um, in the essence of interest of time, uh, we'll go ahead and move on. So if we did not address your question, we'll be sending you a follow-up email uh, shortly. So thank you, Sean and Kirk, and a big thank you to all of our attendees. As I stated at the beginning, this webinar will be available for viewing via the Chasm YouTube channel. So thank you again for your attendance. We look forward to seeing you at the next Chasm webinar. Stay tuned for details.